Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre here. Welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you so much everybody for the kind comments about part one of my beginner's guide to atmospheric optics. Are you ready for part two? I am, let's go. As I said in the last video, all of these optical effects caused by the sun may also be caused by the moon. You just need a really bright moon in order to see them quite often. So make sure that you do look for this. If you see a lunar halo, which is obviously clear and bright, make sure that you're looking in the other positions as well to see if you can find the lunar equivalent of all of the things that I'm about to talk about. If you didn't see part one of this series, I'll put the, the card to that video up there and I'll put a link in the description box as well. And um, like last time, I'm going to put a picture up in this corner here of each thing as I talk about them in turn. So that way you'll know what they look like and know how to spot them. So the first thing I want to talk about is sun pillars. And again, these are something that are relatively common once you know to look for them. They are caused by the same kind of ice crystals that give us sun dogs. So if you've seen sun dogs or parhelia during the day at any time, then have a look. As Usually as the sun gets a bit lower in the sky and it's easier to look that that direction you may see what looks like a beam of light kind of extending up from the sun and that can kind of be a, a whitish color when the sun's a bit higher but it gets more color as the sun gets closer to sunset it can actually remain visible after the sun has set or before a sun rises of course so obviously it's a pillar coming up from the sun so the name pretty much tells you what it is they are kind of common actually and as I say the sun dog crystals are responsible so they are the flat plate hexagonal crystals so yeah keep an eye out for those if you've seen sun dogs during the day. Next up one of my absolute favourite atmospheric optics and that's a circumzenithal arc. The reason I like Caesar days so much is because you get the most pure colour separation with them than you get with any other effect, including rainbows. The colour separation is stunning and they can be incredibly vivid colours. They just look so beautiful to the naked eye. People don't spot them. They're kind of common, but people don't spot them because they're really high up. The name, again, gives you a clue as to where they are. Circum, meaning around. Zenith, meaning the point directly above your head. So they form like half a circle, like an arc, around the zenith. So they're really, really high up. And I've heard um, people say that tennis players see them quite often because they throw the ball up when they're about to serve. So... People say that they look like an upside down rainbow. Again, nothing to do with rain here. There's no rainbows involved. And it's not upside down. It's the right way up because a CZA curves that way, like a smile in the sky is how I kind of prefer to think about it. They do slightly change how tightly curved they are and they also change how wide out they come as well. They can extend out quite a long way and be a little bit more muted when the sun is a bit lower. Then as the sun is a little bit higher, then you will get one that's a little tighter. And then when the sun gets too high, you can't see them. So they do vary a little bit with solar altitude. In terms of where they're placed, you will find them double the distance up from the top of the halo. So the halo, you've got the sun and then the halo will be 22 degrees above that. That's where the top of the halo is. If you go that distance up again, that is where you see the CZA. So they are really, really high up, but they are incredibly vivid. They're quite common. So make sure you look up. I mean, we all do this at night as astronomers, but make sure you're looking up during the day as well, because if you're not looking up, you're not going to see these. So I'll have inserted a couple of pictures as I was talking that will hopefully give you an idea of where they are. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a superlateral arc. They are way less common than circumzenithal arcs, but they're in the same part of the sky. They arch in the opposite direction. So a circumzenithal arc is like a smiley face in the sky. A superlateral arc kind of curves around, kind of in a slightly flattened arc. You do get nice colours in them, really pretty colour separation, but they're just not as commonly seen as circumzenithal arcs. So the stuff I'm talking about tonight is vaguely in order of how frequently these things occur. So definitely worth looking for. These are one of those atmospheric optical effects that really do show up very, very well when you do the colour subtraction routine. 
I'm not an expert on the colour subtraction, by the way, but if anybody does want me to show you how I go about doing that, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on it. And um, there is a blog that I read about it, which has been translated from French, so that the, the translation is not perfect, but it gives you the basics. If I can find the link to that, I'll stick it in the description box of this video. But if you want me to specifically do a video on that, then please do let me know. So number four on today's list is a parhelic circle. Now you may remember in my previous video we talked about sun dogs and the correct name for a sun dog is a parhelion. So the name parhelic circle will give you a clue that they are in some way connected to sun dogs. Now you'll remember that sun dogs change their position with solar altitude if you saw my first video and that ties in with how much um, parhelic circles change with sun altitude. They change probably the most um, out of all optics in terms of they still form a circle but the size of that circle changes dramatically depending on where the sun is. So when the sun is above 60 degrees, as I said in my last video, you can't get sun dogs, they just won't form. So if you get a parhelic circle, you may see it actually contained like this tiny ring that is actually contained within the inside of a 22 degree halo it's so fascinating i've never seen one in that position myself but so incredible these are nowhere near as commonly seen and that's basically because for kind of in terms of frequency for every 122 degree halos you may only see about four parhelic circles so they are quite kind of less common but they're also colorless they're um, a kind of circle with thin line circle that is white and that means that if you see fragments of it which is often the case rather than a complete circle you may mistake it for aircraft vapor trails that have just dissipated but once you've seen it once you kind of get a sixth sense for it does something about it it's a different quality it just looks different than an aircraft vapor trail so when the sun is above 60 degrees, as I said, that parhelic circle is contained within the halo. When the sun gets below 60 degrees, you may remember that sun dogs sit above the sun and outside of the halo. The parhelic circle starts off its bottom edge in the sun and then forms a circle around out through the sun dogs. So when the sun kind of dips low enough for sun dogs to appear, you end up with a, a kind of smaller circle, but it goes onto the outside of the 22 degree halo. When the sun gets a bit lower again, if you can end up with um, the parhelic circle being around about the same diameter as the 22 degree halo. But then as the sun gets really low, that circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it can pretty much hug the horizon across the entire sky in all, like, all 360 degrees. So they are definitely worth looking for and they are so beautiful. That kind of slightly luminescent white arc that you get with them is just so gorgeous. One thing I will say about the, the visibility of them in the UK, every time I've seen them, and there have been a few times now, they are there and then within five minutes they've gone again. And sometimes you may just get fragments, as I said, so you don't always get the complete circle. But they're so lovely and they're fascinating and definitely something worth looking out for. And just remember, if the sun is high, then you're going to have a totally different size and placement of the ring than you will if the sun is a bit lower remember that once the sun gets below a certain point if the parhelic circle is visible it's going to be carrying on behind your head so if you see fragments of a parhelic circle extending out from sun dogs don't just take a picture looking towards the sun make sure you pan round and have a look and see if the rest of the circle is actually visible behind you because when the sun is low that circle is going to be behind your head in every direction so make sure you look for those so next up on my list is the Circum Horizon Arc. This is a straight arc that has horizontal colour separation, red on the sun side and the blue end underneath, away from the sun. And they are located 44 degrees below the sun. So it's the equivalent position that the Circum Zenithal Arc is in, except it's underneath the sun rather than above. So straight away you're going to need to be able to see 44 degrees underneath the sun in order to see them but it gets a bit more complicated than that because in order for them to form at all the sun has to be above 58 degrees and 
from here in the UK where I am at 52 degrees latitude that only happens between mid-May and mid-July and obviously the nearer to the edges of that you are it won't be above 58 degrees for very long the maximum amount of time in the UK that the sun is above 58 degrees around local noon is 150 minutes so you need to be out around local noon not um, daylight time saving time so we're talking about noon UT here rather than BST so around the middle of the day if you've got conditions that are showing atmospheric optics make sure you have a look below the sun as well at 44 degrees below the sun and see if you can spot the arc it will extend out in quite a long way either side it's parallel straight line quite often you'll just get fragments of it the only time I've photographed it there's only been two occasions I've seen one the first one was in Barcelona and it was incredibly faint and was very very difficult to show up on my phone but it was definitely there the other time I saw it I was a passenger in the car while we were driving down the motorway so my pictures are not great but what was really apparent is it was very fragmented and initially it looked like it was just like a little arc underneath the sun but then you could see the colours had extended right out further out either side so keep your eyes peeled for those if you are somewhere equatorial you're definitely going to get more opportunities than us in the UK very pretty nice colour separation definitely worth looking for. So the final thing in this video is the Parry Arc. These are one of the rarest atmospheric optics and the main reason for that is because these are caused by column ice crystals, hexagonal column ice crystals, but they need to be aligned in a very specific way because there, there are a number of different ray paths that a parry arc can be produced by, but it has to be those specific ray paths, which means the crystal has to be aligned in a very particular way so that the light can pass through them cleanly and in the right way. It also needs very, very good quality crystals because the way that the path is moving through the crystal any inclusions that are affecting the crystal quality will mean that the light doesn't get through and refract properly. So that is the main reason that they're quite rare. I've seen them a few times though. So, you know, we, we talk about frequencies of these things. So for every 100 halos you may get, I think it's 1.1, 1.2 parry arcs. So if you see 200 halos in a year, you're going to see a couple of parry arcs. So, you know, it is worth looking for them. So where are they? They are just above an upper tangent arc. There's a very distinct gap between them. It will be obvious that there is a gap of sky and then another arc. So you, you may get the 22 degree halo and then an upper tangent arc doing whatever it's doing, depending on solar altitude. And then you get a parry arc above that in a very distinct kind of place that is above the, the upper tangent arc. The exact position and the exact shape will vary with solar altitude. Sometimes the parry arc is sunk caved sometimes it's sun vexed but either way you may spot them visually sometimes they show up better on photographs they really do show up better using a color subtraction routine to try to to pick out that faint detail so it's another arc once you're aware of it you know to look for it because it the halo and the upper tangent arc will undoubtedly catch your attention first because they're more prominent and more colorful so keep your eyes open for those as well because they are a, a very interesting one and they they are a treat because conditions have to be very specific for them so they are quite a rare atmospheric optic so when you're trying to observe these effects as i said in my last video please protect your eyes put your hand up against the sun and block as much of that light out as you can and make sure you're not looking directly at the sun at all at any point when you're looking for these optical effects so i hope you found the video useful and that you've learned about some new effects that you may not have seen before and if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to hit the like button and think about subscribing if you like this kind of video. Take care for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.